This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. ...are the same at dawn. As even Oxford Street can look beautiful in its emptiness, so Venice now seemed less insatiably picturesque. Give me Venice as Ruskin first saw it, without a railway. Or give me a speedboat and the international rich. The human museum is horrible, such as those islands off the coast of Holland, where the Dutch retain their national dress. The departure of this boat from Trieste was attended by scenes first performed in the Old Testament. Jewish refugees from Germany were leaving for Palestine. On the one hand was a venerable wonder rabbi, whose orthodox ringlets and round beaver hat set the fashion for his disciples down to the age of eight. On the other, a flashy group of boys and girls in beach clothes who stifled their emotions by singing. A crowd had assembled to see them off. As the boat unloosed, each one's personal concerns, the lost valise, the misappropriated corner, were forgotten. The wonder rabbi and his attendant patriarchs broke into nerveless, uncontrollable waving. The boys and girls struck up a solemn hymn, in which the word Jerusalem was repeated on a note of triumph. The crowd on shore joined in, following the key to its brink, where they stood till the ship was on the horizon. At that moment, Ralph Stockley, ADC to the High Commissioner in Palestine, also arrived on the quay to find he had missed the boat. His agitation and subsequent pursuit in a launch relieved the tension. A northerly wind flecks the sapphire sea with white and has silenced those exuberant Jews below. Yesterday we sailed past the Ionian Islands. The familiar shores looked arid and unpeopled, but invincibly beautiful through the rosy air. At the southwest corner of Greece we turned east, past Kalamata in its bay, and came to Cape Matapan, which I last saw from Taigetus, outlined by the distant sea as though on a map. The rocky faces turned to ruddy gold, the shadows to a gauzy blue, the sun sank, Greece became a ragged silhouette, and the southernmost lighthouse of Europe began to wink. Round the corner in the next bay twinkled the electricity of Githian. Stockley recounted an anecdote of his chief, who was shot in the legs during the Boer War and left for thirty-six hours before help came. Others had been shot likewise, for the Boers had fired low, some were dead, and the vultures collected. So long as the wounded could move, however feebly, the birds kept off. When they could not, their eyes were pecked out while still alive. Stockley's chief had described his feelings at the prospect of this fate while the birds were hovering a few feet above him. This morning, the double peaks of Santorin cut across a red dawn. Rhodes is in sight. We reach Cyprus at midday tomorrow. I shall have a week to myself there before the charcoal burners arrive at Beirut on September the 6th. Cyprus, Kyrenia, August the 29th. History in this island is almost too profuse. It gives one a sort of mental indigestion. At Nicosia, a new government house has replaced that which the riots destroyed in 1931. Outside it stands a cannon presented by Henry VIII of England to the Order of St. John of Jerusalem in 1527. This bears the Tudor arms, but the coinage, struck to commemorate the jubilee of British rule in 1928, bears the arms of Richard Coeur de Lyon, who conquered the island and married there in 1191. I landed at Larnaca, a few miles off in A.D. 45, landed Paul and Barnabas. Lazarus is buried at Larnaca, so are two nephews of Bishop Ken, Ion and William, who died in 1693 and 1707. Dates begin with an Egyptian notice of 1450 BC. Fame arrived at the end of the 12th century with the rule and culture of the Lusignan. To King Peter I, Authors so various as Boccaccio and St. Thomas Aquinas dedicated books. 
In 1489, Queen Catherine Cornaro surrendered her sovereignty to the Venetians, and 80 years later, the last...